If you've ever felt Python dependency management is slow, fragile, just clunky, UV has been evolving fast to fix that. In this video, I'll walk you through how UV works, how to set it up, and also what's been recently improved in the latest version, which at the moment of recording is 0.8.0. .0. And if you enjoy writing clean, well-structured software, I also got something for you. I've put together a free software design guide that helps you improve your software design skills in seven simple steps. You can get this for free at iron.codes slash Design guides. Link is also in the description of this video. Now, before I take a closer look at UV and what's possible in the latest version, you might wonder why do we actually need a tool like that? You can simply install Python on your machine and then add dependencies with pip, right? Well, in principle, that's true. When you're just working alone on your own machine and you don't really care about transferring your work to another machine, working together with different developers, deploying it somewhere in the cloud, then yes, you can basically use Python as is on your local machine. However, if you're not a pure standalone Python developer, then it's helpful to have a better solution for managing dependencies and virtual environments. Because if you need to work on some piece of code and you need to share it with another developer, you need to make sure that they have the same environment as you, otherwise it won't work. Python might not find the dependencies. There may be a version mismatch between the different Pythons that you and the other developers have installed on their machine. So you need some sort of virtual environment option for that. Now there are tools for that already in the Python ecosystem, like pip and virtual env, et cetera, but these are actually quite clunky. They're kind of hard to use. A couple of years ago, we had poetry, which also solves that problem of dependency management of virtual environments. Works pretty well, but nowadays I highly recommend working with UV. It's built in Rust, it's really fast, and it has everything that you need. Now let's start by walking through basic Python workflow using UV. Now you first need to install it on your machine and you can use a curl command to install it on your machine. I'm using Homebrew on my Mac, so I've installed it with Brew and that also works pretty well. And it replaces a bunch of tools like pip, virtual env, pip tools, and more. To initialize a project, simply type UV in it. And now this has set up a basic project with a project tunnel file that you can see right here. Now, as you can see, the dependencies in the file are empty. So adding a dependency is really easy. For example, let's add HTTPX, package that's really helpful in many different situations. So this now installs the package. And when we print the pipe project file, you see that HTTPX is right here. Now, if you need to remove the dependency again, that's also really easy. Simply type uv remove HTTPX, and this has removed the dependency. As you can see, it's no longer here. In a new project, UV also creates a very simple main file that you see right here. And running this is very easy. You simply type uv run main.pi. And this is going to run the project in the virtual environment that belongs to your project. So as you can see, this is really easy to use and it's actually also really fast because UV is built in Rust. Now the interesting thing is that there have been a ton of new releases of UV. I think they basically release something like every week. If I scroll down, you see that, for example, here we have 0.7.19 three weeks ago. And then if we go back, we have again three weeks ago, more three weeks ago, last month, uh, more last month. So they release regularly new things. And as you can see, there's like a ton of bug fixes, enhancements, changes every time. So UV is very much a moving target at the moment. It's improving by the day, basically. And of course, for a new tool, that's really important. So it shows that the team behind UV is really serious about it. And in particular, in the latest releases, there are a couple of things that I think are interesting to quickly mention. I'm not going to do like a in-depth UV video today. If you want me to dive deeper into some of the features of UV, simply let me know in the comments and then I'll maybe do a dedicated video about that particular feature. Now, one thing that is interesting is if you take a look at um, some of the more recent releases, that there's simply been more support for the various types of Python. For example, of course, we have the upcoming Python, Python 3.14. So since 0.7.16, there's support for the 
3.14.0 beta 3 version. And adding more support for different Python versions is something that you clearly see in all of these release notes. For example, here in 7.18, we have ARM64 Windows Python version support. And if you go to 0.7.20, we see there is support for beta 4 and PyPy 7.3.20 as well. Now, this is all great. Of course, it's not really relevant what the precise versions are here. But as you can see, it's pretty clear that UV focuses on being compatible with a wide variety of Python versions. And I think that's important to know. Now, next to being compatible with lots of different versions, there's also been several enhancements and performance improvements. For example, here you see performance improvement make cold resolves about 10% faster. Or in 0.7.16, share workspace cache between lock and sync operations, which also makes it more efficient. Or in 0.7.21, improve the cache key performance. So there's many of these small little tidbits that just overall make UV more efficient and faster, which is nice. Now there's one kind of bigger thing that's been recently added to UV, which is this workspace flag. And what this actually does is that it allows you to manage dependencies for multiple projects at the same time. I can do a standalone video about that specific feature if you want to, just let me know in the comments. But the idea is that if you have multiple projects going on and they roughly have the same kind of dependencies, I mean, that happens quite a lot. Like if you're building, I don't know, a bunch of automations that all rely on the same things then having a workspace for that with a single virtual environment and dependencies and everything can be really helpful because it will just simply be easier to manage. You can also find more information about workspaces in the UV help pages. So workspace is basically a collection of packages that are managed together. And if you have a large code base, then you can split those into multiple packages with common dependencies. And what happens is that you do have per project your own PyProject TOML file, but the workspace shares a log file. So it operates with a consistent set of dependencies. So that definitely helps with performance, but there are more of these small things like GPU aware installs for Intel or AMD. There are clear error messages, safer locking. All of these small things help. Now, another area where UV has improved a lot is simply fixing bugs and simple quality of life improvements. Basically every release has a bunch of these bug fixes and I actually recommend you taking a look at the release to see what's in there. It's kind of interesting to see. Now the biggest thing to me is the new build backend which has been added in one of the recent releases. It has a massive impact. But before I talk about that, if you find this helpful, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel. It really helps more developers discover modern tools like UV and helps me keep making videos like this one. Now let's talk briefly about the new build backend. As of version 0.8.0, UV build is now the default build backend for UV. And what does a build backend actually do? Well, this is basically what Python uses to turn your project into a distributable package, like a wheel or a source tar. Traditionally, this was done by setup tools or hatchling, but UV build is a much faster and cleaner alternative. It validates your metadata, it respects the modern standards, it integrates directly with UVs locking and syncing. And as of 0.8.0, you don't even have to think about it, it just works, it's selected by default. Whereas before, we had to use the hatchling build backend. And this uh, new UV build backend also requires no configuration for most Python projects. How can you see what the build backend is? Well, basically, if you're using the most recent UV, then default, it's going to be UV build, but you can actually also add that manually. And that's by specifying the build system option in your Py project TOML file. So in this case, we explicitly state that we're using the UV build backend. Now, I haven't done extensive tests, but according to the documentation, this results in 10 to 30 times faster builds, fewer bugs, and a modern workflow that's easier to reason about. Anyway, it's just a quick look at everything that's been happening in the UV universe through version 0.8.0. But I'd like to hear from you. Have you already switched to UV? What's your experience with it? Let me know in the comments. And are there features of UV that you'd like me to do a more complete overview of? Now, already a while back, I did an introductory video to UV. If you want to watch that, check it out right here. Thanks for watching and see you next time.